This is an overview of the table widget by Unlimited Elements for Elementor. I'm going to show you how to add a data table to your website where you can add sorting, you can uh, add icons inside of your table, you can add filters in your table if you want to filter certain data, and you can add images, buttons, icons, you can even add a toolbar with copy, print, download options. You can really make any table that you want. Without no more further ado, let's get started. To get started with the table widget by Unlimited Elements, search for Unlimited Table in the Widgets pane inside of Elementor and drag and drop your widget to the canvas inside the Elementor Builder. What this widget does, it adds a data table to your website, which you can edit in all sorts of ways. And I'm going to take you through all the settings to show you how this works. So as you can see, the first setting is for width. So we can change the width. This is a responsive table, meaning that it knows how to collapse the columns when we're on a mobile platform. Over here, we have an option for alignment. This will change the alignment of the text to whatever your liking is. I'm going to start off the tutorial by showing you how to edit the data and then we'll go over the extra features. So first of all, I'm going to open the items over here, which is the part where users can edit the data. And the way this is structured is that you add, first of all, the header items, because each table has header items, which indicate what the data underneath is uh, about. And then you can add rows and under each row, you can add columns, which are the data in each column over here. So first of all, just as an example, it's always best to use the default table and add on to that or edit that. So I'm going to add a, another header item over here. So I duplicated the last one country and I'm going to call this phone. Now it's important when you put a title that you also put a value because at the end, the uh, title over here is just for an indication. It's an inner indication and the value is the part that's going to be shown to the visitors of the website. So we've done that. You have an option if you want, you can add an icon. Right now there's no default icon, so I need to open the icon library. Inside of Elementor, I'm going to search for phone and I'll just add that phone icon into my header. So that's a really cool, unique little thing that we've added. And the next part is for override header color. So if you want just this cell in the table to be a different color, you can just turn that on. And now only that cell has a different color. And of course it can also have a background color. So sometimes you want to highlight just one part of the table. You could do that as well. So you have maximum flexibility over here. And we also have an option to enable sorting and uh, I'll show you this on a different header item for example uh, on the country one so let's open the country one and we'll enable sorting and what that does it adds a sort of a smart little arrow over here that users can click on and then it's going to sort it by alphabetical order or if it's a number field if you have numbers over here it will sort them from down to up or from up to down so that's a really little cool little nifty trick over here and the next part is for the rows so the rows are pretty simple they don't have too much but the reason it was important for us to add rows is because sometimes you want to highlight different rows in different colors right now it's alternating colors meaning odd and even colors for the data but if you would want to highlight just a certain row you could do that as well so just by turning that on now this row is highlighted. So that's pretty cool as well. Let's check out the data. So I'm going to add another data field over here. So after Germany, I want to add the phone number that's related to the contact Maria. So I'm going to duplicate Germany and open that for editing. And over here, I'm going to write her phone number. So I don't know, 
Let's just make something up real quickly over here. Awesome. So that's how you populate the cells inside of the table. Now over here, we have an option for content type. So in content type, you can change this to different types. So for example, just as an example, if I would want this field to be a button, instead of showing the phone number, I want users to be able to click to call. I would change that into a button. I can say click to call. And over here, I can put the link. So for example, I would make it a dynamic tag. And in actions, I would do contact URL. Over here, I would set this to telephone number. And over here, I would put her phone number. Now users can use this button to click to call. So over here inside, we have an option for icon, text area, text editor, which is a more advanced kind of text with uh, options for bold and italic and all that. Image, which is a simple image, just if you want to populate the data cells with images. And you can even load an Elementor template. So really, you have all the options, all the type of data sources to populate your data cells. And again, we have an option to override the color of the text and override the color of the background. So you could just uh, put in here whatever colors you want if you want to make some kind of advanced design. So let's turn off the button, go back into text area. And let's add our last one over here. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and it's going to be the phone number. So over here, I'm going to write phone. And this is going to be the data, whatever. And now we have that field populated. So this is looking really, really good. To add another row, this is a reminder you're going to need to have another row item. So I'm just going to duplicate this row item over here and drag and drop it to the end. And over here, I'm going to change that to row three. Okay, now we have another row, but it's not populated with data. That's why we can't see it. So to populate it with data, I'm going to duplicate the data cell, drag and drop it under row number three, and over here, I can change the data. So for example, this is going to be UPS. Let's do the next one, which is the name of the contact. So I'm going to duplicate this one, drag and drop it down over here. Awesome. Let's collapse this. And this one is going to be the contact name. Just give it my name. Awesome. Then next, we have the country. So we can just duplicate the data, put in whatever data we want. And let's do the last one, which is the phone number. Awesome. So that's how you add data into your tables and edit the table data, the data sources, and override colors. Let's jump back into the settings and see what we have over here. So the first setting is to enable filtering. Now we have two types of filters. One is inside of the headers, and this is a live filter. So if I start typing in over here, it's going to filter the data that equals my query. So if this is the string AM, it's only going to show data that relates to that string inside of that certain column. So that's pretty cool. We can also show the filter inside of the header. If you don't want to make a, inside of the toolbar. So over here we have a toolbar and a, you can turn on or off different fields. You can add a search over here. This is really, really cool. So that's about the filtering. The next part is about the layout. So over here, the first and most important field is for responsive column behavior. 
what happens when there's not enough room on the device to the table. So we have uh, two options over here, what it's going to do to the columns. So the first option, the default option is collapse. That's the one that I prefer. And the second one is just to hide the columns. It's just not going to show the columns. To see this, I'm going to jump into mobile view over here. And as you can see, when there's not enough room for the column, it's going to collapse these over here and then the user can open it. Now, if you want to, uh, for example, just show only the company name and that you want the contact and the country to collapse, a little trick is to go into items and we're going to make this column wider. So I'm going to go into company and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this column wider. And what that does, it makes it so wide that there's not enough room for the other columns. And now we have a cool accordion kind of interactive accordion and user experience for the visitors on our website. So that's a really nifty tool and that you guys can use. So that's inside of layout. I'm gonna go back and you can see that when I change the width of the column, it's not really affecting too much on desktop. And let's jump back into layout and see what else we have over here. So this is the column default state and they can be closed or open. Text direction, this is for right to left or left to right, depending on the language of the website and resize column. Now this is an important setting. Right now it's disabled, meaning users cannot resize the columns. But if I would open this for headers, then we will see a cursor. Our cursor will change to a resize handle and then users can play around with the column to resize it. So that's a really important feature. Sometimes it's important for users. In my use cases that I've used the table, I've never needed to open it, but just so you know that it's possible. Another option to make our table sort of an accordion is to use grouping. And when I turn this on, I'm just going to show you what that does. It makes it into a interactive accordion again, but this time it's not just going to be for mobile and you can group more than one row. So that's really cool. And that's what it does. So that's about grouping. And you can, you also have an option for breakpoints over here. This is really some advanced stuff. Toolbar, another nifty little tool that we've added. You can add a copy button, a print button, and a download button. So this will add these to the toolbar on the top over here. Copy, print, download, whatever you need for the user experience that you're looking for. And in my case, I don't need those right now, so I'm just going to turn those off. And the last part before I'm going to finish up the uh, video over here is for the style. So as usual, if you're familiar with the limited elements, we're going to add all the styles that you need. I mean, uh, everything that you need, colors, typography, text, spacing, padding, margins, everything. So borders even. So whatever you need over here and let's just jump into the rows part and over here you can see the color of the even rows and of the odd rows. So let's just change that a little bit just so you can see how that works. That makes that zebra looking kind of effect. Of course, if you don't want it, then you can make them both the same color and that's how that works. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.